I'm Gary Nickerson. And I'm Quinn Taggart. And this is Outside My Window. In 1989, the CRTC granted CIFA a broadcasting license, and the radio station has been serving the Francophone community in southwestern Nova Scotia since September 28th of 1990. Radio CIFA provides information and entertainment to Acadians, Francophones, and Francophiles in southwestern Nova Scotia and around the world through their programming. Now, while supporting the community, too, to promote and develop the Acadian language and culture. Thanks to the involvement of many volunteers and a very dedicated staff, CIFA offers its listeners a variety of programming, including local and national content, whether it be music, news, or cultural events. And we're very pleased, Quinn and I, to be on location here uh, at the CIFA Broadcasting Center. Our guest today is Lisa Doucette, and she is the General Manager for CIFA in Comoville. Thank you so much for having us here. We appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me, and I'm glad you came here. (laughs) So, interesting history, as we mentioned, going back to 1989, uh, when the CRTC granted the license. But prior to that, obviously, the community felt a need to have their own community radio station. You talk about that and the history of CIFA. Yes. Um, Actually, today in the studio, somebody that had been involved in the original uh, in the beginning of CIFA, came in the studio. He hadn't been in the studio in years. And uh, he told me it was since the 70s that there had been talk about a radio station down here. But nothing had been done. And finally, enough of them got together. And in 1984, they did a, a study, a feasibility study, to see if it would work. And obviously it did. So there was enough people to come in and get together and they raised money and here we are now. Obviously, and for those who may be listening and and not know, uh, we're in Comoville, um, in in Clare, which is a predominantly Acadian community. Yes. And a community and community is very proud of their heritage and culture. Speak about that and how that's reflected through CIFA programming. Yes, we are a very, very proud people. Um, it's Somebody once told me we need to keep our language and our history and everything alive because what would have been the point, because as many people that are into the history know that we were deported by, by the English in 1755 and... Uh, we were deported to many different places, and a lot of us came back. So why it would be a waste not to try and hold on to our heritage, our language, if to, the, to these people that did the trek back if we didn't keep everything. Any radio station is, is uh, regulated by the CRTC. So what are the rules surrounding this community radio station, CIFA, as far as uh, programming in, in, in French or, or English? What's the rule of thumb there? Our license states that we have to have approximately 65% French content. That is French music or speaking, French Acadian. Um, and the rest is English, Spanish or instrumental, instrumental music. So, and we do have one a show that is Spanish because there has been a lot of uh, Mexicans coming into the community. So one of our, actually one of our directors speaks uh, very good Spanish, very, very well because his wife is Spanish. So he has started a Spanish radio show to give, uh, to give the Acadians a word here and there, you know, a, a Spanish word to learn of the day and all this. And then he plays Sp- Spanish music. So it's uh, it's not just English and French. Mm. So a very diverse radio station. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, Lisa, um, community uh, in involvement. Uh, does the radio station and perhaps its directors and, and staff, you know, talk to, to people in the community and see what their their needs are, what they think about programming, how much leeway is there? Uh, we try and keep, we, of course, because we are such a small community, everybody knows everybody. So whenever you go into the store, they, they'll let you know if they don't like something. <laughs> and they also let you know if they like something. Um, 
especially the worst thing is the bingo because they'll get mad at you because they didn't win. <laughs> <laughs> or you call the numbers too fast. Or the music's too loud. Or the music's not loud enough. But uh, all in all, they still play. So that's what counts. And, and they're happy. So, um, yeah, so they, they let you know. But we, we try and keep the programming, like, we try and keep the programming in one way. Like, because you cannot, if you try and please everybody, it's impossible. So, but we, we do take requests. Like I know a lot of other radio stations don't take requests because they, they can't, because the blocks of music are set and that's it. That's not how it is with us. We will, many times somebody will call in, it's so-and-so's anniversary, can you play their favorite song? And we will. Like most of the time, we will. It costs a lot of money to operate a radio station, obviously. And as we mentioned, you have a, a, a solid group of volunteers yes. and those uh, on staff as well. So how does that work? Do you sell advertising? You, are you limited to the amount of advertising? How do you pay the bills? No, we're not limited to the amount of advertising. We, uh, we do sell ads. We have the last, for the last year or so, we have a designated uh, ads person ads salesperson. She's awesome. Uh, she's helped a lot with, with finances and that, but we also, the bingo is our main, is our main moneymaker. Um, myself, I would prefer it to be more dependent on the ads, but unfortunately it's, it's the bingo, but it's, um, we also have like grants from the government because we are nonprofit we have to apply for grants. So what's the reach? What's your wattage? How far could people be away and still be able to pick up SIFA? We are 1,500 watts, but because we are on the CBC antenna and they have made a lot of uh, improvements, so now it used to be that uh, it, the, the reach would go like way up instead of out. But they've put something, uh, I'm not too technically inclined, but they've put something on the antenna and it makes the waves go more concentrated in, in around instead of up. So now our reach is from around Digby to, I'd say, Barrington. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Digby, it's, it's, it depends on the day. But, uh, or even on the highway, I've, I've caught it up to, if you're on the 101, I've caught it up to almost Annapolis. Wow. Yeah, but when you go down in Digby, then you lose it. But uh, yeah. yeah, but Barrington um, in uh, Birchdale, you can get it. Wow, <laughs> really? Yeah, wow. yeah. So it's uh, yeah, the birds and the squirrels really love listening to sea and <laughs> <laughs> music influences exactly. the animals. I've heard that. Mm-hmm. I've heard that. Uh, speaking of influence on on and music. How much local content do you try to put in when it comes to French pu- French music? That is what we try to push the most is the local musicians. That's who started, you know, because of them, we are here because they would bring us their music and we would play it. And it's a, it's like it's a symbiotic relationship. They came to us, we played their music, so it gave us content to play. And we played their music, so it gave them some place to broadcast their stuff, their their art. So, uh, yeah, we try as much as we can. So whenever somebody new has something, we put it on right away. Yeah. You mentioned earlier, Lisa, how difficult it is to program a radio station. You can't please it. it, it it's a, <laughs> pull your hair out, literally. Yes. Um, mm. So what is your sense? Do you, uh, you know, kind of survey the audience? Do you have more uh, perhaps uh, senior uh, folks listening? Or have you been able to draw on the younger generation, if I can use that term? Um, it's right now, for the longest time, it was mostly the seniors. Because uh, I can go on the computer and see who, like, who's listening, like, the, the age group and that. And it's mostly still seniors. But we are trying to modernize it a little bit, you know, bring in the younger stuff. Because we know of younger people, 
that do want to listen, especially like uh, T. Beliveau and Sluice and, and Mike Vick and all those, they want to listen. We And we play those a lot because that's what people want to hear. Even the older generation wants to hear them. So what we do is um, we, we still play the good old stuff that the older people like. But we'll, we're starting to put a little bit more new stuff, a bit more modern stuff, even modern stuff from like uh, Quebec and New Brunswick and stuff like that, the French stuff from there. So, uh, yeah, so that's how we're trying to balance it. Are, do you broadcast through the Internet? Yes, we yeah. do. So um, you have people from, you know, obviously I would think from down in, in Louisiana yep. and other those areas. So how far, you know, in, in your... Uh, listener surveys have you found people are listening uh all over the world we've had australia somebody messaged us on facebook uh, a country singer from australia messaged us so we have there we have a lot in france and of course there's like the french populations in saskatchewan and manitoba and all that so they listen a lot so uh, yeah new brunswick everywhere so it really is pulling in that, that Acadian and French-speaking community yes. around the world. Yeah, yeah. And the funny thing is, is that back in the day, our, our accent from Claire was frowned upon. Um, we were always told we weren't speaking the good French. And now, the last few years, it's the tides have turned and our accent from Claire seems to be the in thing from the people from Quebec, from New Brunswick, everywhere. Everybody wants to hear us talk. With the university here, we have all different kinds of French accents because there's people from Morocco and uh, Bene. I'm not quite sure how that you say that in English, the country Bene, it's in Africa. Mm -hmm. um, and all these places. So it's awesome to hear them all. And I love all these people coming in because you learn so much about the different things and you learn... Yeah, their accents, their cultures. Yeah, it's it's awesome. Now let's let's take a step back, Lisa. How how was your journey to get you to today? Like, what what's your background? How did you end up where you are now? My passion has always been my community, and I was trying to find a job back into Claire. More, more like back into, yeah, in the community. That's what I wanted to, and I want to be able to speak my language again, you know, all the time. And so an opportunity came to do the bingo, to call the bingo. And I thought, well, you know what? It can't be that hard, you know. <laughs> and the Saturday morning, the Saturday morning uh, show, they, they needed somebody from 7 to 12 on Saturday mornings and doing the bingos on Friday night. And I had some experience with uh, uh, CTV Morning Live. I was the community correspondent with Cyril Lunny. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, we do that through yeah. Skype. So I'm like, I was no stranger to, you know, speaking public. Well, I guess you could call it publicly, public speaking, but yeah. Yes. So I thought, I'm going to give it a go. And they hired me and I really loved it. So, and then one day, the manager that was here was leaving. She was going back to her hometown in uh, in Shetty Camp, and uh, I applied for the job. I thought, you know what? Uh, anything can be learned, but you cannot learn the passion for the people and the community and the the Acadian heritage. So I obviously work because here I am. <laughs> <laughs> you you got bitten by the radio bug. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I did. It's, and if people would try it, they get bitten too. It's, yeah. I've had uh, like offers to go be manager someplace else at a lot higher wages and what, and nope, I'm staying here. I'm, I love it. It's the same in doing the podcast. I've been involved in community media for 40 some odd years. I started out volunteering at Viking Cable back in 81. And, um, you know, to do the podcast, I didn't think was that big of a reach, but there's a lot of a, there's a lot different atmosphere and a different approach when you're dealing with the different media types. Mm -hmm. So you've done a little bit of television, you've done some radio. What have you seen um, skill set wise 
that you bring to the table when it comes to the radio versus doing, say, television? Hmm, that's a good one. <laughs> Gift of gab? Is, yeah. What is it? Yeah, I'm not afraid to, to talk, as you've noticed. <laughs> I'm not afraid to just chit-chat. I tell people, um, being on the radio is like talking to yourself. Mm -hmm. So if you like talking to yourself, but make sure that it's clean, uh, it's it's the job for you. So uh, and I love interviewing people, and the people know that too. So uh, they know the minute that there's somebody to be interviewed, yep, it's her. She'll she'll do it. I'll take time out of the manager position and I go behind the the microphone, and it's it's fun. We look at it at, at our show as, as like a chat mm -hmm. more so than an interview. Now I've done interviews, but sometimes the person you're, you're trying to interview doesn't necessarily want to be interviewed. Yes. <laughs> and it's yes, no. And it's like a, being a dentist. You're trying mm -hmm. to pull those answers yeah, out of the Yeah, been there, person, done that. Right? Yeah. Um, but for us, the way that Gary and I have approached the podcast has been, it's a chat. We're sitting around. We got a coffee in our hand, mm -hmm. and and when even when we're doing the uh, the chats over telephone, Gary and I still have a coffee yeah. in our hand, right? <laughs> now, yeah. what our guests choose to drink on their own mm -hmm. is up to them, uh, but uh, but generally it it's very relaxed. It's conversational. We're not looking to probe deep, deep, deep into anybody's closet or, or whatever, yeah. but it's just to have that conversation. And that's what I tell people when they, if they're nervous, I'll say, don't be nervous. It's just you and me. Yeah. We're just chit-chatting. Uh, yeah. Don't yeah. be nervous. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's very different from when I was doing community television. You've got lights, you've got cameras, you've got a crew, you're in a studio. Yes. It's very intimidating. Yeah. To certain people. I mean, and it was for me for the longest while. Um, I've probably spent more time in front of the camera, you know, 17, 18, 2017, 18, 19, mm -hmm. than I had in the previous 35 years before that. Mm -hmm. Because if I wanted a project done, I felt like, all right, I, I got to get in front of the camera and I got to do it. Um, but doing the podcast is very relaxing. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Like when I was with the, the CTV Morning Live it's, it's very, yeah, it, it can be intimidating because even though it is Skype, you know, in the back of your head, you know that there's like 50,000 people or whatever watching you. Sure, your hair's all yes, gone up. Yes, and, and that's <laughs> exactly, uh, one morning, oh my goodness, one morning I slept in uh -oh. and all of a sudden the phone rings and the minute the phone rang, I knew exactly who it was and why he was calling. And he's like, Lisa, are you there? And I'm like, oh my oh, goodness, crap. Cyril. Yep, yep. I'm, I, he says, uh, I said, can you give me like five minutes? And he says, okay. He says, we'll go to commercial break. So I'm here running in the bathroom. And at the time I had long hair, so it was easy. I just pulled everything in a ponytail and like, <laughs> like yeah, yeah, my yeah, cheeks. Yeah. And like, Thank goodness I had gotten everything ready the night before. So I had my notes and the computer, everything was ready. But oh, that was, yeah, I, I was even contemplating, should I put pants on? In case, because you're at this, <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I oh, I said this will be the morning. He'll say, can you go and see what the weather is outside? So I thought, yes, I gotta put pants on. <laughs> but that's what it's been like for the last couple of years uh, under COVID. You know, I mm -hmm. work from home. Um, I communicate with clients around the world. Um, whereas prior to COVID, the camera, we had little slides on our camera to make sure that we would never have it operating when it came to our laptops. Okay. Now it's, yeah. it's a faux pas if you don't appear on camera mm -hmm. for the clients when you're, when you're doing the meetings, right? Yeah. So all the wonderful advantage of working from home and having the ability to skirt the dress code, uh, you know, now is out of the window. I actually got to, I got to dress up, you gotta so to speak. You got to put pants on. Uh, well, I don't have to put pants on, but generally <laughs> I do. <laughs> generally I do, but, but, um, um, you know, it, it, it's one of those things where, where, uh, things have kind of changed. The, 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 the normalcy has, has moved. I hate new normal. I hate that phrase. I hated that phrase. I yeah. still do. Yeah. I hate yeah. it. Yeah. But, but <sighs> the, the, 
the methodology by which you operate is, is much different. So I've been doing, I do television every day, mm. right? And I mean, a lot of the clients, admittedly, um, over the years, I probably have talked to them dozens of times a week, mm-hmm. never met any of them. Yeah. Because I haven't traveled enough to to be able to pop in and, and see any of them. Well, now I see them all. Yeah. You know, and they see yeah. me. It's the same yeah. thing. See, being a radio station, we were we are deemed uh, as an, an essential service. So actually nothing here changed for us. We came to work same mm-hmm. as everything, even under the strictest lockdown. We still came to work. Be- and the way the studio's set up there, we were way more than six feet apart. We really actually have all our own offices. So for us, nothing changed. We even still had the bingo because the way the studio, the right, uh, uh, mise en own there, <laughs> studio, yeah, I guess you call it, uh, the caller and the technician are six feet apart. Wow. So we we were one, there was, I think there's only five bingos going on in Nova Scotia and we were one of them. Mm. So it was very good for us. Because I know at Y95, it's a lot crammed. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot more crammed than that. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, uh, that's what I heard. Yeah, they couldn't. Yeah, well, no. most people couldn't, and we were yeah, we were the only ones doing bingo. Well, it was the same for us at the Mariner Center. I volu- have, have it's going to be my tenth year volunteering with them and doing hockey, and of course, fans yes, fans no, whatever. Yeah, but for our production team, it, it's not as it's not as easy for us to do six feet apart. But generally, in the control room, there's one person mm-hmm. usually it's me and i would switch cameras run replay control the audio mm-hmm. handle all of that and then your commentators are in a separate spot as well as you know now yeah. your camera people are out and about but um you know doing a hockey game with no fans <laughs> i mean you watch it on tv but they pump in crowd noise to kind of fill in i know a little bit i know we didn't have that capability so yeah you, you go out to do a mariners game with no fans yeah well it, it, it was, was spooky even though we were here it was depressing because yeah. we are always on the go we've always got people popping in in like that interviews the university students have a show uh one of the professors brings that bring the the french immersion kids uh, once a week and they talk about specific topics so they can practice their their French sure. on the air. We do that. Wow. Yeah. So with that, they weren't here. All the people popping in and out weren't here. Uh, people that were winning bingo couldn't come in and get their checks. Everything was mailed. Mm. Um, yeah. And like everybody down here was not essential. So there was nobody here. It was like you could hear the crickets, you know. It was, it was, it was very depressing. Yeah. Now, see, I, I started working from home before COVID struck. So for me, it was just another day at, quote unquote, the office, mm. right? So nothing changed for me. And for my company uh, that I work for, uh, now they have a con- you know complete workforce trying to work from home. And we're mm. technology-based, so you'd think, oh, well, you should be able to handle that. Yeah, but you know, you've got network infrastructure that's not set up to handle 2000 yep. people all of a sudden logging in right mm-hmm. used to that in the office but not from home so yeah. there was a lot of a lot of work that had to be done in order to be able to accommodate those folks but um it was just another day at the office for me yeah except for the fact that well now I'm not going anywhere else. yeah there's nothing to do there's nowhere to go i i i can't remember when I was able to go a week on 20 bucks of gas, mm. even at the price of gas, yeah, you know, and, and essentially I, I get up, go upstairs, go to my office, come downstairs, go back up to the office, come downstairs, done for the day, wouldn't leave the house. Yeah. See, like here we, we could have worked from home yes. because yeah, it, it's technology. We can, you know, we can sure. do it from home, but we chose not to. And that's a whole different feel working from home. I, I, I did do it because my son kept coming home from Toronto. So I'd have to isolate for two weeks every yes, time he'd come home. Yes. So I'd say, I love seeing you, but you either got to stay here or stay there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it, I would, I would honestly almost go crazy 
staying, working from home. I can work from home a day or two. Mm -hmm. That's it. After that, I need to see the people. Well, now I get out a little bit more. So pff, it's nice. Yeah. Uh, the work from home is not that bad. Mm -hmm. But I can go into the office now if I need to. Mm -hmm. uh, but usually it's only when I have to change the password. I Just doing it through VPN is a bit cumbersome and, and I've yeah. had bad experiences <laughs> with that but um, um, I, I can go into the office mm. but, there, but there's nobody else on my team in the Yarmouth office mm. so there's no uh, necessity for me to do that so I, you know yeah mm. I spent plenty of money putting it together so I'm just going to stay where I am yeah but I have to give my my employer credit that they give me the flexibility of being able to come and go as mm -hmm. I need to, um, you know, and being able to do the podcast work. They're well aware of all the stuff mm. that I have on the go. And therefore, you know, if, as I might need to take an afternoon off or, or an hour longer lunch in order to be able to do something. Yeah. And I give, that's what I give my staff also the opportunity. If they want to work from home, go ahead. But yeah. all of them choose to come into work because it's, we prefer being here. Yeah. Mm. I think as broadcasters, we're we're used to ad adapting. Mm -hmm. You know, a microphone's not going to work, or you accidentally pull a wire out. Yeah. Not that I've ever done that. No, mm -hmm. no. Or back in the day, you mm. know, turntable would break, or a you know a tape would break. We've so. got we've got a good excuse here. We have a ghost. Wow. All right. Thank you for telling me that. <laughs> Are we done now? Yeah, nice chat. Nice I'm chat. Going back on my wheelchair. Well, <laughs> tell us about the ghost. Uh, he's not an old ghost, and he's a friendly ghost. He's a priest. Um, he he was here at the radio station. He used to have his uh, his own show, and one Christmas he was just finished his uh, his broadcast. And he was on his way to do the midnight mass, I guess. This is the way the story goes. Um, and when he, he was at the top of the stairs, because it's like I told you guys, us, it, the studio, everything is upstairs. Mm -hmm. And he was at the top of the stairs. And by the time he fell, he had a massive heart attack at the top. And by the time he hit the bottom, he was gone. So, uh, yeah. Wow. So he's the ghost. Mm. Cool. Yeah. I say cool, but... <laughs> and, and people that don't believe in ghosts, like our former uh, uh, music director and uh, also our morning show host, he, uh, he doesn't believe in ghosts, but he says there's something. Yeah. Because he, of course, he'd be here like at five o'clock in the morning and all of a sudden there's nobody here and all of a sudden he hears a knocking right beside him like a... You know, not just wow. like a, a knock, but it was a distinct knocking at the door. Wow. Right beside his ear there on the wall. Uh, I'm going to tell you just now, if the lights flicker or the fridge door opens and closes or anything like that, <laughs> I'm out of here. I'm not even going to wait for Quinn to wheel back in my wheelchair. <laughs> One of my favorite things when I was a reporter was getting out into the community, mm -hmm. whether it was, you know, covering council meetings or public meetings or, yeah. or festivals or whatever. And obviously, you know, CIFA is very much involved in the yes, community in that yes. way. Can you speak to that a bit more? We are, we are often at, uh, like we were at the Tuna Festival in Wedgeport last two weeks ago. Like, so we broadcast from there. Whenever the Christmas Daddies is at the Legion, you know, we're doing Le Papa Noel down here. So yeah, we do that at fest the Acadian Festival. We've been there. It's, we try, we try to be everywhere, like to promote the, the radio station and the community. So people can hear us from wherever they know what's going on in the area. Uh, we now have a journalist. So uh, we're very happy that he's here and he's able to, you know, touch on things that people usually would not like news from Halifax would bring in. So it's it's great. He can do stuff that's local. But that's one of the advantages of being a quote-unquote community radio station is that you, you have the flexibility of not having corporate oversight, you know, kind of feeding into or influencing the we, programming yeah, setup. Yeah, you, you still do. Yeah? You still do because we sell ads. True. Um. When it comes to uh, 
political, that's really, really touchy because you, I have no opinion now. <laughs> the minute I became manager, I no longer have an opinion, a political opinion. And it's worse than like somebody in the private radio sector because a lot of our money depends on the government. So if I'm a certain po uh, political party and it's the other guy that goes in, you know, will we get as much money? So that's why anybody that works here has no opinion when it comes to political <laughs> parties and they know that well. <laughs> well, Gary and I are in sort of the same boat. I mean, we, we've... We've been uh, uh, fortunate enough to be able to have people like Chris Dontremont, Colton LeBlanc, who are on the PC side, mm. Zach Churchill, who's on the liberal side, Mayor Pam Mood, who leans on the liberal side, I believe. I don't think I'm stepping out by saying that. Uh, you know, so we, we've, been, we've been fortunate enough to be able to have those folks be fans of our podcast mm -hmm. and, and come on and, and, uh, and take the questions that we put forth but we're not news you know so yes we're, yeah we're trying really hard to not be news yeah certainly some of the topics that we cover we've covered mental health we've covered clear cutting mm -hmm. we've covered a, f a few things that are more you know could be construed as quote-unquote politically oriented it, it's what's going on you know it's not like we're we're uh, picking on those particular things on purpose no it's just this is what's going on how are you handling it? Yes, What exactly. are you going to do about it? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know that sometimes when we're interviewing um, elected officials, I find myself once in a while having to kind of pull myself back and say, okay, Gary, this is not an interview. An yeah. Interview. Yeah. But, but, but it's fun. It's not but, an interrogation. It's, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm, yeah. And, uh, you and know. It's it, hard it, to issues. do that sometimes, <laughs> not to. That's right. Yeah. It's yeah. difficult. As you said, it's it's you mm -hmm. have to you have to watch yourself. You know, we have a bit more freedom, as Quinn uh, was mentioning earlier, with the podcast. But we're very um, aware of you know the, the, those those boundaries. You know, we always want to be respectful. Yes. As, yeah. As, as you were here at at yeah. CIFA. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's like that. I'm not trying to. Uh, get any skeletons out of anybody's closet when I'm. I just. Give me the facts. That's yeah. it. That's all I want. What's it like when you go out into the community, though? I'm sure you can't make it through the grocery store <laughs> without at least a half a dozen conversations in the aisles. Uh, when it was COVID, it was easier because I had my mask on. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. uh, but now... No, actually, it's not bad. It, it depends on the day. Some days I'll get stopped, and I don't mind. No, I don't mind. That's... But it's great that you're getting some feedback. Exactly. Yeah, I, I like it when people stop me to chat about whatever. Uh, one <laughs> one guy, we were at the market in uh, Billivos Cove last month, and my technician was there also. He just happened to be there. Um, I was there actually learning how to make podcasts. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. And, and, but he was just there for, because it was a Saturday. So, and then this one guy stops us and he started ratting on, you know, saying, I don't like your music that you've got now. You guys used to be such a good radio station and he, on and on and on. And we're like, well, sorry, but I mean, we're just changing a few songs here and there. There's nothing really major happening. And he kept going. Finally, two weeks later, we're at the Tuna Festival, and he's there. And he's like, I have to apologize. He's like, I had the wrong radio station on. It wasn't you guys oh, I was listening to. Oh, my to. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think we've all gotten that. You, yeah. know, it, you know, people will, you know, I... You hate the music or yeah well he was like you didn't do a story on this or yeah. why did you report a story this yeah, way and, but, and sometimes those uh, encounters or phone calls mm, usually phone calls are worse because yeah you know that people are angry mm. but i usually found found that when you you know say to the person look hang on take, mm. take a breath i want to hear your concerns mm -hmm. they will they will come They'll, down yeah, and yeah. become a bit more rational yeah yeah uh, the one big 
issue, though, with being on the radio, and maybe you guys found this out, is uh, <laughs> I called the, the RCMP once because, and I call, whenever I do calls like that, I never call from their work phone. I, I call from my cell phone. So uh, I call them just to ask if something was legal or illegal because somebody was mowing the lawn and, and it was pushing all the grass into the road and it, it was dangerous and there was a lot of grass. So I was just calling, to, not 911, just the office to see if it, right. if it was, you know, legal or illegal. And the secretary, she's like, Lisa? I'm like, yeah. She's like, I thought it was you. So I'm like, <laughs> so she said, I recognize your voice from the radio. So I said, obviously, I can't do crank phone calls anymore, can I? So <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't call anonymously. No, 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 no. Or I'll be, we'll be in the, like in line at the movies or something, my husband and I, and uh, I'll get a tap on the shoulder and they'll say, you're on CIFA, aren't you? Yep, I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So you can't do anything anonymously now. Mm. Now you mentioned that uh, you have a, uh, a series of volunteers that help out at the station. What what do the volunteers do? Do they do a little bit of everything all the way through? Each volunteer does what they're good at. That's what we try and get them to do. There's no point in putting somebody that's afraid of a microphone in front of a microphone. So uh, those people, some we have two ladies that come and count the bingo cards and stamp the back of the bingo cards with our logo. Um, we have other ones that most of them are do radio shows, their, their own little radio shows. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what they do. Like they do like, yeah, like I said, counting the bingo cards, stamping them, doing shows when we need help. Like maybe if we, if we'd make a, a radiothon or something, we'd need food. They would make the food, you know? So it's, it, I'm a firm believer in getting somebody to do something that they're good at. And then they'll like what they're doing also. Mm. It's one of the things when we talk about volunteers is that, you know, even if it's time, yeah. everybody has the ability to give mm -hmm. back into the community. And without the volunteers, CIFA wouldn't be CIFA, Exactly, would exactly. That's how it started. And like... Uh, the board members are all volunteers. So thank goodness for them because you need a board if you're a nonprofit. So we're, we're very, and I'm very happy to have them because they're an awesome board. I have to admit, I have no issues with them whatsoever. <laughs> they love me and I love them. Maybe because I bring them fudge and jelly, but well, I'm, oh, no. that, that might have something to do with it. Maybe that's why they love me. <laughs> <laughs> they can't wait for meetings. <laughs> As a nonprofit radio station, are you abnormal in the radio community? Like when you look across Canada, are there a lot of stations similar in structure to the way CIFA is? Uh, for, the, for the French, yeah. For the French, uh, we're pretty common. Well, not common, but there's... There's a lot of them. Like in uh, the way for the, the French community radio stations, there's in Nova Scotia, it's called uh, L'Arco, which is the, uh, oh man, I can't think of what it stands for now. But anyway, oh, yeah, it's for the Atlantic region, the French Atlantic region. Then there's four of us in Nova Scotia. And then there's Arc and Bay, which is the New Brunswick one. And they have a lot more community French radio stations. Uh, PEI has none, or Newfoundland. Now, when it goes to Quebec and and New, uh, there's even some in Nunavut, French radio stations. So sure. there's, and then there's the big umbrella, and that's Lac du Canada. So that is, they keep all of us underneath them, and they help us find uh, find money advice, whatever. They give us uh, training in whatever we want. Oh, yeah, it stands for L'Alliance Radio Communautaire. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you had to say that. My, my French is like 1981 French. It's a long ways back. Um, so with that in mind, I mean, what sort of what sort of flexibilities do you have as a, as a community 
radio station, French or otherwise, um, that is missing from the corporate structure in radio nowadays? What would you like to see the other places do better at? Be more homey. I think that's the word I'm looking for. Like, uh, in Acadian, we say, yet avenant, to, to welcome people. Like, because like I was saying, like, we will take any, well, not anybody's music, but I'm, you know, like any French music, you know, bring it on, we'll play it, you know, and I don't think that's how it works in private radio. Uh, yes, yeah, so, and if people want to drop in and have an interview on the spur of the moment, once again, come on in, we'll do the interview. Yeah, I and I, and I think, you know, it's been my experience in working in, in community television in that, you know, people tune in to 10, 6, 10, they want to see people that are, in the area. Mm-hmm. They want to see events that are going on in the area. That's yeah. the whole idea of having the community channel yes, is to be yeah. able is to be able to do that. Um, and I think that that's the same sort of thing when they, you know, when you turn on your radio, yeah, you want to be exactly. able to hear people that are in your area yeah. for one, but it's also even better if you can hear music yes. of people that are in the area. Exactly. Exactly. And the amount of talent that there is in the French community in Claire and Parambeau is astounding, astounding. It's incredible. They actually, they're thinking of doing a, a, not a survey, but a study on why there's so much talent in certain areas. I guess in Songueville Station, there's what they call the Tricore. It's a, it's a triangular area that so many musicians have come out of and they don't know why. Is it in the water? That's what they're wondering. <laughs> Maybe that's why they're going to do the study to see. You know? Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's incredible. It, you know, and that would be an interesting study to, mm-hmm. to read, you know, yeah. to be honest. Because, yeah, I mean, when I was growing up, um, there was nothing like kitchen party. And no. You, and you couldn't, you couldn't really do that in Yarmouth. Mm-hmm. You had to you had to go to Wedgeport or you had to go to Pubnico. Yeah. You had to get out of the, out of the town core. Yeah. To really get that kind of yeah. atmosphere. And that's what would happen here. Like my husband remembers going to his aunt's camp. And there, of course, his cousin is uh, Kenneth Sonier. So, <laughs> you know, that yeah. was quite the kitchen party. That would be. Yeah, you know, with all. And his father was musical and, and his uncle. and Because that whole family of the Sonniers, you know, there's a... Uh, David Sonier and Michael Sonier and all them, you know, it's, well, Michael wasn't born then, but, you know, the rest. So, yeah, there was kitchen parties and camp parties, whatever, everywhere. Yeah. I mean, mm. at, at anywhere you go, you, you're you breaking up the guitar and the fiddle and mm-hmm. away you go. Mm-hmm. I mean, not, not, that, not that there wasn't entertainment for the townies. Uh, a lot of it was rock and roll, mind you. Yes. But you still had music. And music, food, community... Brings everybody together. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Especially with Rocky Pie. Uh, and especially. Frico. Yeah, well, I, you know, I'm not a, as big a Frico fan as I am a Rocky <laughs> Pie fan. But uh, but certainly. Um, one thing I wanted to ask was, what what's next for CIFA? Have you, have you guys got an idea of, like, what sort of uh, uh, things you might be foraying into down the road? Or is it just... Steady as she goes. Well, we're trying to modernize stuff. Um, like we now have a new website. We have you can re, you can listen to us off from through that website. You, you mm-hmm. know, hit the click here button and uh, or uh, to us it's EC. Who <laughs> <It's> EC? <laughs> yeah. My, right. yeah. Um, it, well, actually, it's in, in English and French. So. Um, so there's that. We have actually an app on the phone for oh, you cool. to listen to Sifa. Uh, that's yeah. cool. Yes, we are moving up in the world. Um, we, uh, I've, like I said, I learned how to make podcasts. I'm still new at it, but I've always wanted to take all the old shows because we have all the old shows yeah. uh, downloaded somewhere. And so I don't want to lose them. So yes. I've been flipping those to podcasts and putting them on our website. Nice. Nice. Yeah. 
so people can go and listen to whoever, you know, I'm just starting, there's just a few on there now, but when I have a few minutes, I go and dump another few, and yeah, so stuff like that. Um, I'm very big on saving the heritage, saving, I always say whenever we lose an older person, you've just lost an an encyclopedia. We both say the same thing. Yeah. So it, it, it freaks me out whenever I lose, you know, somebody that I knew had all this information and nobody wrote it down or recorded it or something because you'll never, no, n- you never don't replace get it, back. it. It's gone. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. So that's why I'm trying to do these podcasts. So then the, the old, the newer generation can listen to all these stories. And uh, one of the shows we have is, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, is uh, Jean Dissette with uh, Jean-Louis uh, Beliveau. And he interviewed a lot of older people that are gone now. So he, I've, we still play them on the radio, but um, more now, I've, that, that's one of the main ones that I'm putting as a podcast first. Mm, that's it, wonderful. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's great amazing. that you have mm. them. I'm so pleased that that you're doing that. And yeah. I'm sure the community is too, because yeah. sometimes, uh, you know, that doesn't happen. Yeah. The interviews get lost and yes, and all of that. Mm. Yeah, um, and we've had, I we've had that issue that some things have gotten lost, and uh, I don't want that to happen on my watch. No. No. So, uh, but uh, but we are having because it was our 30th anniversary in 2020 and COVID was at its height. We couldn't do anything. We did do. Um, well, it's not a CD because you don't make CDs anymore. But <laughs> but uh, what we did was we put together older musicians and younger musicians together, nice. and we gave them a list of old songs that first started off on CIFA. And we said, remake the song. Nice. So do whatever you want with it, modernize it, whatever you want. And so we have 10, seats, 10 songs done like that. Nice. Um, and they've been very, very popular. Very popular. So, uh, yeah, we, that's all we could do for our 30th anniversary. So since COVID is hopefully on its way out, uh, October 1st, we're going to do an open house. Excellent. Yeah. So it's, we've, we're putting it in the Claire Shopper. Um, anybody that wants to drop in, it's going to be October 1st from 10 to 2 here at the studio. We're going to have a few munchies, some prizes. If you want to talk on the air, this is your time. Hey, maybe I'll be able to discover new talent. Never know. Yeah. Wow. Maybe, Never know. maybe. So yeah, so everybody's invited to, to come over and, and see. Because I hear a lot of people saying, They'll walk in for whatever reason. Uh, well, usually it's because now we sell T-shirts and mugs and stuff like that. So they come in to buy the stuff mm. and they'll say, I didn't know I was allowed in here. And I'm like, yeah, you are. So I thought, well, everybody's saying that. So why not just tell them, okay, come on in. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So that's another thing that we're doing to uh, modernize. We're selling merch, as the young people nice. call it. Yeah, we've started yeah. bringing in the merch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning all these new terms. <laughs> How are you on social media? I mean, you get a Facebook page, but what about uh, TikTok, Instagram, and we have all Instagram. Those other ones? I don't have time for TikTok or anything. <laughs> Honestly, I say my job is almost completely Facebook and Instagram sometimes. Yes, That's blessing like, a blessing and a curse. Yes, I always yes like yes. I have a love hate relationship with Facebook. Yeah, mm. I think I think that that applies for a lot of folks. I mean, granted, yeah. our our main platform started out on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Now we're also uh, simul posting, I guess if that's a real word, um, on YouTube as well. So we're able to we're putting our recordings up on YouTube for those folks that are not Facebook fans. Mm-hmm. I get it. Yeah, not everybody is. Um, and then that way we you know we've got ourselves in two places. Uh, but um, trying to get people from the Facebook group over to YouTube. <laughs> I know, I hasn't, know. Hasn't worked out the way I was hoping it yeah. was going to, but that's fine. Yeah. You know, when we, when we started this, we thought, ah, if we get a couple hundred people, we'll be great. And then, and then it went past 200 people. Then it went past 500 people. 
And then now we're sitting a little over 2,000. Wow. And okay. it's like, wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, one thing that I do like about uh, um, the Facebook platform in and of itself, as well as the YouTube platform, is the analytics. Mm-hmm. You can see how exactly. many people have watched yeah. and, and, and what your reach has been and, and how many active members that you have. We don't get a lot of feedback on the site, and that's fine. We're no, okay with that. but at least that. you know somebody's listening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's not just right. talking to in the air. Yeah. No, and that was one of the challenges, mm. unfortunately, and and nothing against East Link and that mm. in in the, uh, the you know long standing relationship I have with them, but I had no idea if anybody was really watching mm-hmm. unless you messed up. Oh yeah, because yeah. when you mess up, and that that's happens when in you radio find out. too. That's when, when you, you find mess out. up, oh, they yes. let you know. We'll get calls. Yeah. Oh yeah, I remember. I guess. No, I wasn't around then, but uh, our morning host one day actually said... Uh, a bad a, word? A, oh, yeah. Mm. And it didn't take long for people to call. Like, he he just, for whatever reason, just slipped. blurted it out. Yeah, it just slipped. Yep. Yeah, and, uh, oh, yeah, it didn't take a lot mm-hmm. of time to call. But we do have YouTube. We have a YouTube channel, but it's not very active because I just have not had the time to yeah. put stuff in there because we what we used to do is we used to uh, Facebook live the morning show yeah. right and that worked for a while but then Facebook got wind of it yes right. and yeah. we kept getting get kicked off and kicked off yeah. and it was a great way people loved it well see and this is why it. we record and then post because I get a chance to you know fix things uh, but the- but they're starting to get a little cranky on, on our podcast because I have an original piece of music that I got a buddy of mine, uh, Kurt Green. Shout out to Kurt. Um, <laughs> Kurt Green did, did the uh, selection for me. And he had done it for something else that I had done. And I thought, mm-hmm. oh, this is going to be good for our intro. Mm-hmm. And we've been using it ever since. And recently I've been starting to get copyright warnings. But then okay. when I click in on the copyright warning, I get an error. So it's like... You're throwing me a warning, but then you're not letting me get in there and fix it. But yeah. it's still tagged that way. And it's like, only you can see this. And All right, fine, whatever. I'm not just going to ignore it now yeah. because I know what I got in there. But once in a while, once in a while, like with the uh, uh, tribute show that we did for Ray, I did, have, I did have Amazing Grace by the Pipes and Drums guys. But that was in a recording that Ray had done. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't peel it out, so I had to leave it. And, um, and I got, you know, I got a warning for that, Yeah. but they let you go with that. Now YouTube does the same thing. YouTube has a list of things that are absolutely worldwide. No, no ACDC thunderstruck and a bunch of other yeah. ones. I guess are, the Eagles is a bad one too. There are an absolute no, yeah. no. Yeah. And so you will get turfed for that, yeah. but at least. YouTube will let you go live, mm-hmm. but then when it comes back for the you know for the storage so that you can rebroadcast yeah. it, that's when they'll take you offline until you fix it. Yeah. And we get dinged a lot on the hockey games. Oh yes, with all that music, right? With all the music, but yeah. we've been trying really hard to coordinate with whoever's doing the 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 music in the booth to not play the red list. Mm-hmm. And then that way we just get warnings. Yeah, but usually the red list is the good one. It is. <laughs> it is. It's the ones that you want to play during the hockey I know. It's the one right? that gets the people going. <laughs> <laughs> do you but, guys do any sports? Do you guys cover you uh, know, any we do, events that way? Uh, no. I wish we did, but we just don't have the manpower. Right. Yeah. Uh, we do get the sports uh, news, you know, and sure. all that. And we do play that, you know. We broadcast that. But, yeah, I would love to be able to, like, go to the Mariner Center or go to uh, the university, you know, when they, mm-hmm. they've got the basketball games and all that and the volleyball games. I mean, I guess the university's really – the women's volleyball is awesome, I guess, you know. Yep. But we just don't have the manpower. Yeah, yeah. it's a tough one. Yeah, and, and I-, I know if we did have the manpower, I know that Eastlink would 
tackle me to <laughs> yep <laughs> because i've been down Mike the same is road always bugging me do you know anybody that's french that could do the hockey I'll, I'll tell you i've i've been at that for a long time it's been four years at least that i could remember that i've been trying to find somebody to do french mm-hmm. uh for the uh, paramba games yes because mm-hmm. we broadcast those and and i'd love to be able to do one in french and it's an almost instant guarantee that east link will take them mm-hmm. because they're they want the french language programming yep um, do you think I can find anybody? Nope. 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 And I know people that speak French and mm. are really, you know, hockey people, mm-hmm. but put a microphone in front of them. Mm-hmm. But it's not easy commentating. But if you put them in front of a game. TV, if you put them in front of a TV on a Habs <laughs> game, <laughs> yeah. they got tons to say. But if you yeah. put them in front of a microphone in, yeah. in a high yeah. school That's game. That's like no. my son, but you, the bleep button would be, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Burning. <laughs> so, Lisa, you, you've also forayed into television as well because you've got an Eastlink show coming up. Yes, I do. It's called Le Poulailler, uh, which is uh, French for the hen house or chicken coop. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's a story to that. I don't know. Well, it's just, you know, how people, I'm not going to say women. I'm going to say, you know, how people can talk. Uh, and sometimes when you have more than one, you know, couple of people there's like blah 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 it doesn't stop and it's like the chicken coop so uh, my husband built me uh, a little she shed by our house which is by a lake and I call it le poulailler so that's where the the show takes place so I wanted I wanted a specific theme song because my husband's cousin Kenneth Saunier wrote a song called le poulailler oh really yeah uh, so, of course, it's got, you know, you have to get the rights and all this. And uh, they, uh, Mike McDonald worked hard. And Kenneth was so tickled pink that I wanted to use his song nice. as the theme song that he said yes right away. So, yeah, so it's going to air on uh, Eastlink Community TV October 16th. Yes, it's October 16th, Sundays at 6 p.m. Sundays at 6 p.m.? Yep. On 10 and 610 or yes. just 10? And how many episodes have you done? 13. Wow. Yes. I think it's, it was supposed to be 12, but one of them went over, so we cut it in half, and it's 13. And actually, there's going to be a Christmas special. Wow. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. And you're interviewing local people? Is that the Yep. The it's all, uh, not just local people. There's a few that are from out, uh, and... Next season, there's going to be like, you know, people from Cape Breton or whatever, the French community there. I'm going to try and get everybody I can. A lot of, a lot of interesting people. It's really fun. It's like I said, I love to interview people because you learn so much. Uh, one, one guest, I told him, I said, you're coming back because we have more stuff to talk about. <laughs> because it's, nice. uh, it's uh, uh, the priest the local priest here and he's from a country in Africa and we really just talked in the show about how it is coming from Africa to here like you know it's not exactly warm here in the winter time no. and you know and all this stuff and how he came to become a priest and all this and then he mentioned that his country is also the capital of voodoo like that's where voodoo first came to be and i'm like oh really i said okay well that's our next show that's a whole other show <laughs> yeah and that's what i told him i said you're coming back so. i sense a halloween special oh, i don't <laughs> a little think early so. for that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no so that's uh that's the show so remind everybody again the open house october the first from 10 to 2 here at cfa which is uh, 795 trunk one in Comoville. And like I said to you, it's a big white building with an electric blue uh, roof. So- it is set back off the road. Yes. I did drive by and then had to double back. <laughs> uh, the, it, my, my GPS was uh, about half a block off, right? So okay. So it's like, oh, you've arrived. Oh, no, I went by is what happened. Yeah. <laughs> I knew the building, but I, I was looking for it, looking for it, looking for it, but I was also watching traffic. So Yeah, and there's that big, huge sign at the end of the road, too, that You know, helps. and and the funny thing was, is as, as I was doubling back, I saw the sign, and then I took the road just first. And, oh, and, and yeah. And down towards the fish plant instead, yeah. instead of in your front door. So Yeah. 
<laughs> so, but yeah, so everybody is welcome to come. Uh, unfortunately, it's not wheelchair accessible going up there. So we are thinking of maybe having uh, the laptop downstairs and doing uh, like a live feed, like a tour, a virtual tour mm. for people to see. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be mm. kind of cool. And one thing I'm going to make sure to do is show people that the bingo is not fixed. Oh, my Lord. I'm going to show them how it's, it works. <laughs> yep. Yep. I've uh, been down that road yeah. many times. Yeah. I'm going to show you, show them. See, it's a computer program now. It cannot be fixed. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. My father's always complaining. It's fixed. It's well, good not. luck with that. Let me know how that works out for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. You know, I, I'm. I gotta say, you know, the local community, uh, francophone and otherwise, at abroad, is so fortunate to have CIFA. This has been such an interesting interview, and I know I speak for Quinn as well. And and you the folks are just doing some amazing <laughs> thank things. Thank you. Yeah. And, thank uh, you. You know, keep on. Yeah, keep on we're we're gonna we're gonna try. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we'll here for, be here for another at least thirty years. Yeah. I probably won't be here, though, but... Well, you never know. You never know. Say that. I'm on Freedom 85. <laughs> uh, I'm Freedom 100. I got about yeah. another 40 years ago. <laughs> we, since it's not wheelchair accessible, you know, going upstairs, we keep saying that uh, the municipality is going to have to put one of those acorn stair lifts. Yes, yes. For me to get upstairs. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I can keep on There's working. money for that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Lisa, thank you so much for your hospitality. Thanks for having us here at SIFA. Thank you for your time. Well, thank you guys for having me. It was fun. <laughs> I'm Gary Nickerson. And I'm Quinn Taggart. And this has been Outside My Window. <laughs>